Hello class. Today I'm going to talk to you about using some of the basic editing tools that I'm going to ask you to use in your um, peer review for one another. Um, for some of you this may be old hat, for some of you this may be new information, but I do want you just to sort of know what I'm going to be asking of you and then ask you to do more of it. Alright, so the first thing is about comment bubbles. I'm going to ask you to, on your peer review, identify some things like, um, here's the title. So I highlighted this, and I click on new comment, new comment, this is the title. I'm probably clearly going to ask you at every point, and any time you're giving feedback, to identify the thesis statement, because if you can't find the thesis statement, that is a problem possibly in the writing, not so much in the reader. Um, and so you want to be able to identify somebody else's thesis statement. And if for the reader, um, you're like, this is the thesis statement, and if the writer gets back and six people have said that the thesis statement is seven different sentences, which would be a really neat trick because bad math, then um, then the author has a problem, which one was supposed to be the actual thesis. Right, if the reader can't tell, the author has a, has a writing problem. So here's my thesis statement. So I'm going to identify it. All right, thesis. All right, in your, um, in your commentary, I'm probably also going to ask you to identify things that are unclear. So for example, here, all right, this is unclear because um, it's such a change in formality. Okay, and so there you go. There's there's how to use the comment button. Now, as a writer, you're going to get all this feedback from each other, right? From your peers, from me, right? Having used all these comments, right? And then you're going to be going along. You're like, well, I want to delete that. So as you as you make changes, so you might click on the comment here and then click on delete. Here's the comment. Click on delete. Comment. Delete. All right, another function, another thing you can do is track changes. Now, I love the track changes button. Um, what the track changes button does is it shows the reader what's being changed, and that way it's clearly identifiable. So, for example, here, if, let's see, I want to take out the, you know, the contraction. So I'm going to highlight it, take it out, and then type in I have. All right, and maybe same thing here. Let us make sure it's capitalized. Start with regular scheduling, blah, blah, blah. Now I might notice here that, dude, um, this is not the same font. The spacing is different. Um, and that's true because I um, catch this from a bunch of different places. So I might do control A to select all, right? And then, so I select all, and then I'm going to make sure everything is the same. So Times New Roman, size 12. Right, I want to make sure everything is double spaced, so I'm going to click here for the double spacing, make sure it's at 2, and this is MLA format, so I want to make sure no spaces are between paragraphs, so I'm going to click back here, and where it says remove space after paragraph, I'm going to click there to remove the space after paragraph, um, because that is the default in Microsoft Word for reasons I don't understand, but MLA does not like it, and so you have to take it out. Alright, so now I've done that, and see over here it tells me what I did. All right, so let's see, what else might I change here? Um, I don't know, let's see. Let's, let's, let's ramp up the spelling and grammar checker. So to do that, I go to File, and scroll down to Options, and from Options I go to Proofing, and yes, I will have this written down for you somewhere else, don't worry. Um, and then here, when correcting spelling grammar word, so I make sure everything is checked. And I like to show readability statistics, because at the end it'll show me what grade level I'm writing at, which is sometimes fun. Um, so grammar and style, right? I always choose grammar and style. And then I click on settings, and I make sure everything is checked here, except for use of first person, because in this essay I'm writing in first person, so it's okay to be writing in first person, so I uncheck that. And then go to OK, and then I'm going to click on Recheck Document. Um, it's going to say that. I'm going to say yes. Go to OK. And then back to my Review tab. Now, if I go to my Review tab and click on Spelling and Grammar, all right, it gives me some choices. So it wants me to change my contraction use. So let's do that. Change. 
Um, let's see here. Long sentence. Maybe too long to be effective. Hard to follow. Okay, so I do it this way because I'm looking at the big picture first to see where I'm supposed to end up. Then I do the chapter reading set of information. I need to get my destination. Lives in the books. Yeah, you're right. That's probably true. Period. All right, resume. All right. Okay. What does it want me to do? Okay. I spend Tuesday and Wednesday reading the chapters, and Thursday I try to post my responses to discussion boards, turn in summaries, do the weekly... Oh, yeah. All right. It should say, and do the weekly assignments. Okay, good. So I made those changes. All right, it wants me to change my contraction news, so I'll do that. Um, it wants me to change the contraction news, I will do that. Wordiness, okay. Generally really fairly pretty. Okay, yeah, okay. So it is going to be, all right, so instead of really hard, difficult, because that's just a better word. All right, resume. Um, Sure, go ahead and change the contraction. Um, change my contraction. Ah, subject verb agreement. I'm cheating skill like any other, just like writing some sorts of papers. New readers, that is what I'm. Online teaching is like that too. Okay. Um, all right, so colloquialism instead of a lot of, yeah, many is better. That's a good suggestion. Okay, resume. Um, contraction news, sure, I'll change that. Um, contraction news, sure, I'll change that. Uh, here, so it doesn't even know what I'm a gonna mean. Okay, now I'm going to ignore this because I purposely wrote I'm a gonna. Um, mostly because I wanted to the, have the jarring of the um, change in formality. I purposely did that. Now I'm not saying you should do that. I'm saying that I did that. Um, you are still, you know, neophytes. You are still Padawan learners. And so consequently you, you want to be the most correct as possible. I've been doing this for longer than most of you have been alive. So I get to break the formality rules. I know, I know, I know. Okay, so fine, I'll change it. Even I can't, even I can't buy that. I will say it again for the people in the back. Okay. Um, learn to have online education. It can be done anywhere, anytime. Passive voice. It is passive voice. All right, so the learn to have online is... Oh! Yeah, it is passive voice, but I'm going to leave that. I'm going to ignore that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ch change the contractions. Um, I'm going to ignore the things, you know, this is emphasis, even though, you know, MLA does not like it. It's emphasized, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to ignore that change. Um, subject verb agreement is a trap that will, it's a trap that will kill an otherwise good grade. change. Procrastination is a trap that will... No, they're wrong. Control Z. Um, I'm going to ignore that. Alright, make sure all work is done. I'm going to ignore that. Change that. Change that. Change that. Ooh. Damn site, that's the wrong spelling. Um, resume and spell check did not catch that. Mm -mm -mm. And yeah, it is a fragment, so let's change that. Let's just say ask questions, resume, change. Ignore, 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 and then here we are. All right, so um, change, change,
I ignore the passive voice, even though it's right, it should be changed. Um, change, change. All right, and that does it. So here's my readability statistics. Now, according to this, I am writing at a ninth grade level. So I'm a ninth grader. All right, now you should know that this is actually designed based on an algorithm. You can mess with this by creating longer sentences, by adding polysyllabic words. All right, so longer words, longer sentences will make the numbers go up. All right, shorter words, shorter sentences make the number go down. Um, Hemingway looks like a fifth grader. So there you go. I've edited this. Now, if I want to accept changes, I have some choices. I can go at the beginning and accept one by one. So accept and move to next. All right, accept, move to next. All right, or I can click on accept all changes. All right. Or I can choose and some accept to move to next, but I don't like many. I've decided I don't like it. So I can choose to reject that change. Um, now it just says I've taken online classes, which is true. I have. All right. Uh, maybe I want to reject this. Maybe I want that to be um, something different. All right. So and then, so I'm going to reject that. Um, and then I'm going to keep this, accept and move to next. Um, and then accept and move to next. And then I'm going to accept all the rest of my changes and stop tracking. All right. And that's how you use the tracking. You can accept it as you need it. You can reject it as you need it. Because sometimes your authors will give you feedback. Like sometimes really a, a very common thing is one person will give you one kind of feedback and somebody else will give you exactly the opposite kind of feedback. And in that case, as Stephen King says, it's a wash. You can do whatever you want. Okay. So that is something that you can do. All right. So those are some basic editing skills. Um, I've shown you how to use the word comments, I've shown you how to use the track changes, I've shown you how to make your spell check and grammar check work on steroids, and now you have some more tools in your toolbox. Let me know if you have any questions. There will be examples of how I edited this particular assignment in the peer review section. Thanks. Bye.